get a history lesson before we start. What's going on? Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday, Sabaton Friday. Uh, what's so cool, I think, about Sabaton releasing Soldiers of Heaven uh, right now on Friday is the term white Friday during World War One, the Alpine, uh, the Swiss, Al or the Alps, uh, the, what is it, the uh, Austria-Hungary border, um, <clears throat> the war. Uh, and so I figure it like this, uh, we're going to do a history lesson and then we're going to live premiere the uh, soldiers of heaven video so i did find an amazing video on youtube you guys if you don't know i've already researched the um i've already researched uh white uh or what is it white friday so i've already did that and i'm going to pull up this video that i have okay white friday on the alpine front and here's how it started so we're going to do a little history lesson here by uh, jeremy clown actually <clears throat> this is a video it that is I the early 20th century. By 1914, morning, tensions had risen across Europe. Each country was paranoid about an invasion on their soil. Britain observed Germany develop its military and industrial sectors and viewed them as the most likely enemy should a war break out. And a war was on the horizon. A war to end all wars. Countries quickly made alliances with each other and it was becoming clear that two opposing sides were forming. One side, known as the Central Powers, mainly consisted of the German Germany. and Ottoman empires, Austria-Hungary and Bulgaria. Yep. Their opponents, the Allies, mainly consisted of the British Empire, Serbia, France, Russia, Japan, Italy, and the United States. Bosnia had been under the control of Austria-Hungary since it was annexed in 1908. Some people believed that Bosnia belonged to the neighboring country of Serbia and sought to disrupt the status quo. The Archduke of Austria-Hungary, Franz Ferdinand, paid a visit to the capital of Bosnia, named Sarajevo. It was during this visit... When I, when I heard that, Franz Ferdinand, I was, it automatically, it didn't bring me back to history. It, it took me back to this band that was out, and they're like a uh, nostalgic band, uh, kind of like the B-52s in a way, but like from Los Angeles. So long story short, Franz Ferdinand uh, gets killed by this guy, and with his pregnant dang old wife. Uh, so World War I uh, began. ...visit to the capital of Bosnia, named Sarajevo. <laughs> It was during this visit that a member of the Black Hand Society named Gavrilo Princip shot and killed the Archduke and his pregnant wife, Sophie. Pregnant Austria-Hungary blamed Serbia for the murders and issued a list of rules for the country to follow. They agreed to some, but not all of the rules, and so Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia. Within a matter of days, the Allies backed Serbia and the Central Powers backed Austria-Hungary and thus World War I was started on July 18, 1914. I wish it to be addressed on all ranks the importance of the operations about to commence. The Germans are now outnumbered and outgunned and will soon go to pieces if every man goes into the fight determined to get through whatever the local difficulties may be. I am confident that the brigade will distinguish itself in this, its first battle. Let every man remember that all England is watching him. Damn, this looks real. Like, they're dead horses and everything, but did you see that ground erupt like... 
Oh my god. War is so ugly, guys. History lessons, y'all. History school. It is school. now December 1916. The Great War has been raging across Europe, Africa, and Asia for two and a half years. Two and a half grueling years in some of the worst conditions imaginable. Why does it keep doing that? Rats. Lice. Trench. Ew. 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 Fever. Ew. Hold on, y'all. I'm gonna, like, try to clear my browsing data real quick just to see if that'll help. Because I plug it up. <laughs> I plug it up so much that sometimes I need to clear my caches, you know. All right. There we go. That should have helped. Uh, disgusting. Rats, lice, trench fever, trench foot, all kinds of stuff that those soldiers had to endure. Years of war being away from their families. And we'll see why they called it White Friday here in a little while. It's pretty brutal. And they say that the reason why the avalanches happened was because of the mortars and just that shit that we seen earlier, the, the ground just being disrupted. Like, Mother Nature ain't, you're gonna play Mother Nature ain't far behind. About to serve you with a bitch slap. My lord. Trench foot and shell shock. These are what came. It's doing it again. To define the front lines of the war. And the soldiers. That's annoying. Isn't soldiers it? on the front lines have already accepted that they will not see their families this Christmas. At the time, Italy was fighting. Start thinking. Austria Hungary for control of land with Italian speaking inhabitants. These battles were fought. Yes, let's find out why. But on quick. or near the mountain range known as the Alps. The Italians called these series of battles the Alpine Front. The battles were fought at high altitudes and in bitter cold. Several thousand civilians died from malnutrition and illness oh, in refugee camps after being displaced by these battles. Now, this better not happen on that Sabaton video because I'm excited. I've been waiting for this forever, for days. I'm just like, let's do this. Let's do this. I, in fact, thought yesterday was the 7th, and I'm like, where's Sabaton? I'm ready. No. <laughs> so, I think what we're experiencing is a, like a little service interruption because I woke up literally this morning, and I'm looking around, and I'm like, I'm in Antarctica right now. So I had to drive my butt over here and figure all this out. Uh, and there's snow everywhere. We got about uh, four to six inches, so probably why. Beginning in <laughs> December 1916 were a series of avalanches that plagued both sides of the war. The first avalanche occurred on December 13th, 1916 at 5.30 a.m. The week prior saw heavy snowfall which culminated in 200,000 tons of ice and snow crashing down on an Austro-Hungarian barracks filled with 321 soldiers. And look at where they're at y'all. They're not on the ground either. They're up above sea level. Way above sea level in the Alps. Like elevation probably 12,000 feet about. Yeah. Yeah. They're up there on the mountains fighting a war on the mountains. This is amazing. Watch the avalanche watch caused 270 men to be buried alive under the snow and the remnants of their decimated camp. Although the base was built at 11,000 feet above 11, sea level 000. and was well placed to defend against Italian bombardments, it was situated underneath a steep yeah, snow-covered mountainside. Only 40 bodies were ever recovered after the snow had settled. The rest were never found. But nature wasn't finished putting man in their place. That same day, in the evening, a second avalanche occurred, this time striking an Italian camp packed with soldiers. Hundreds of troops perished under the weight of the ice. Damn. Both the Allies and the Central Powers created fighting tunnels by blasting through the limestone rock. These tunnels insulated soldiers from the dangers outside, both man-made or otherwise. 
This constant underground blasting, coupled with overhead artillery barrages, made avalanches not just a threat, but an inevitability. Yep. Exact numbers are not available, but throughout the 12th month of 1916, many avalanches occurred due to the disruption of the environment from the war. Some reports even stated that both sides attempted to intentionally start avalanches by firing mortars into the mountains above their enemies, but these have never been confirmed, and likely never will. When the new year rolled around, estimates of the losses due to avalanches that past December reached up to 10,000 between yeah. both Italy and Austria-Hungary. The higher estimates are viewed as wildly inaccurate, and the number of fatalities, both military and civilian, is likely closer to 2,000. Jesus. Many of the bodies of those caught in the snow slides were found only after temperatures rose in the spring of 1917 and the snow melted, but most of the bodies have never been recovered. Yeah. Yeah. Historical records indicate that in the two months before and after White Friday, around 143 centimeters or 56.3 inches of precipitation fell near the Italy-Slovenia border. Avalanches were so common on the Alpine front that reports from the time indicate that a soldier's most important tool was not their firearm, a shovel. but their shovel. A shovel! <laughs> Even though the initial avalanches occurred on a Wednesday, the term White Friday was coined for December 13, 1916 for unknown reasons. The Alpine Front is one of the least known battlefields of the First World War, and even less is known about the extent of White Friday. Entire regiments were wiped out of existence, but historical records are lacking. If anything, White Friday can serve as a sobering reminder that no matter how far humanity advances, we are always at the mercy of Mother Nature. White Friday came and went, but the Great War raged on for almost another two years. When all was said and done, an estimated 17 million people lost their lives. Wow. Factoring injuries into the count brings the number up to an estimated 40 million casualties. The war to end all wars eventually ended in a victory for the Allies and the signing of the Treaty of Versailles. Yep. But that's a story for another time. France. Okay, so the Treaty of Versailles is where that, that ended, basically. And what is so fascinating to me is how back then they thought, let's, let's dig trenches. Let's go ahead and blow shit up and cause all this disruption to bedrock and, and mountain ranges and stuff. And then you don't expect like avalanches to happen in an in a area where they're prevalent, where they're going to happen. And then over five feet of almost five feet of snow fell like, yeah, you're you're not finding those bodies, especially under uh, the heaviness of an avalanche because you got you don't have just snow falling in an avalanche. You have boulders and rocks and big chunks of ice it's so it's crazy how that happened and 270 people lost their lives the first avalanche and then there was more it's like i would have been like i'm out i'm out of here but it, i guess it didn't happen i don't know if they're gonna have any more on this but i think it was really important that we revisit this that we look at the history of white friday and what the soldiers of heaven is going to be all about because i think it's important for us to to put ourselves there and see what it looked like and this was very graphic this looked very real like it was filmed back then but then it was remastered and colored you know how they do that so it was a great look at what it looked like back then and what uh, to, like a like a precursor of what's to come with sabaton video now, there was, those were some pretty graphic images, and I'm very sorry. Uh, I listened to this on my phone earlier, and I really didn't get to watch it because I was getting ready. And I didn't know that that was going to show that. So I'm really sorry if you guys are easily uh, triggered by gruesome imagery. But and nothing about war is not gruesome. And it's very ugly, and a lot of people lose their lives and die in horrific ways and they are injured and all of that war is not fun but okay let's see what they got they got any more oh there is more yeehaw nice Two little oxen 
oxygen up there in those levels, too. We're right. Absolutely. Oh, a semi here? if I should show this you guys it's getting pretty damn graphic like they had flamethrowers and like ships sinking and all kinds of stuff like people oh lord I am so sorry I did not like get to see this this is the first time I'm actually getting to sit down and watch this uh I'm just gonna play it and I'm just gonna put that disclaimer out there if you're easily uh triggered by gruesome imagery go hi Sammy oh my lord oh no I'm so sorry guys I didn't know that that was gonna happen I'm so sorry wow men argue nature acts nice wow it sure does doesn't it now that is ugly war it's disgusting and a lot of the time look at that World War one I, I didn't even know it started over there on the Alpine of uh, the Al Alpine front because of the ambassador and his pregnant wife being killed I had no clue that's what kicked off World War one and over there anyway and it's like when you look at this imagery we know what war is but until you see it like this the devastation is so imminent and I think we need to like especially like there is re regardless uh, that we're in World War three right now especially that uh, since 2000 and what was it three 2003 we went over to uh, Iraq and just bombed the shit out of Iraq because of what happened here in the United States on 9-11 you cannot tell me that that was not planned. That the, you know, I have a lot of, there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there, but I honestly, to see September 11th happen, and then the Bush family getting the Bin Laden family out of the United States on the 12th, that shit was planned. And we're still there. We're, we're still in the Middle East fighting. So many people die because of war, and, and it's all political. It's sad. It really is. And I am a proponent for our troops not even being over there in the first place. Because what we just witnessed here, this is what it looks like. War is just destruction. And I, I think that being a soldier, it, it's honorable. It's an honorable thing to do to want to fight for your country. But I believe during these times, you didn't have a choice. You were a man. You were going. But, like, with people enlisting in the military here, 
Do I think it's honorable to want to fight for your country? Yes, absolutely. But nine times out of ten, well, ten times out of ten, you're going to fight a political war. And it's going to be very bloody. So we got about eight minutes before we head over to the Sabaton, uh, the Sabaton channel. Well, seven. Seven minutes. Uh, it premieres here. I'm so excited that you guys are here with me. Thank you again for coming. Uh, let's see. Let's do some shout outs here. Uh, the Vicky K, Yoni, Sammy, Velislav, Veras, Iron Fist. Hello. You can't go wrong with Sabaton. They, they are the best. The absolute best. Mark Kemper, hello. Magdalena, hello. Yeah. Like, I really don't have any words. I'm sorry. It, that's the only words I can say for showing that. I didn't know. Honestly, I did not know. I Like I said, you guys, I came over here. I listened to it on my phone on the way here. And then I was getting ready, so I didn't look down at my screen. But I listened to it. And I don't know about you guys, but sometimes, like, I can't hear something one time and, like, grab onto it like I need to hear it a few times because I have ADHD so it's really bad so I have to like watch it and listen to it a couple times for it to really sink in the same thing with me with reading a book I literally have to read the same sentences and the same paragraphs over and over again just for it to me to retain that so I'm glad I got to experience that and sit down and watch it with you am I glad that I got to see that gruesome imagery not at all. And I apologize again for that. But we need to see what war looks like. You know, and... Uh, I don't know if, like, like <laughs> the age-old... What would you wish for? World peace. It's something that's been said time and time again. But I don't think it'll ever happen when we have political leaders... Uh politics politicians running our countries uh, they don't care and um it's sad because even in world war one they said millions of lives were lost the vietnam war forty thousand american soldiers gone gone and my father was almost one of them i'm really grateful that he did not die when he got shot down you know, and he was on a Huey, and he was a gunner on that helicopter. And he was uh, in charge of just destruction. And they had napalm out there. They had uh, well, uh, flamethrowers, I believe, Agent Orange, you know, all kinds of devastating weaponry. And... You know, so many people had passed away, and my dad had seen a lot, and I, I now realize, like, he had a lot of struggles in life, and if I seen what he did, I probably would too. And he had uh, post-traumatic stress. If a car would backfire, he would literally hit the deck. Like, you know how a car's, you know, it, it had build up in the exhaust system, and it backfires, and it makes a loud bang I've seen my father hit the deck, like the ground, like in a, in a soldier stance, like trench style. Sad. So hi, everybody. Oh yeah. By industry. Absolutely. Money. Oh, and the United States. Shame on the United States. They spend more on war in the military. Billions of dollars, right? More than, don't you think that they should be spending that in schools for the children of our future? No. They don't. But every politician, every one of them, promises we're going to do more for the schools. We're going to do more, uh, take uh, and invest more money in the schools. We're going to bring our troops home. Every single last one of them says that. Since I've been alive anyways, after Reagan uh, and uh, first Bush in office. Like, what the hell? I'm sorry, every politician since George H.W. Bush. So Obama promised to bring the troops home for eight years. 
I voted for him. I felt I the voters remorse big time. And uh, yeah, we see what happened if they still ha haven't brought him home. And then they, you know, something happened. I don't know. Uh, they with the uh, pulling out of Afghanistan and um, just devastating. Oh, right. We got two minutes counting. I can't wait for this. Give him a little like, a little likesy poos. Yeah, guys, it's um, sad. It's devastating. World peace show probably never happen. I'm just saying. World peace doesn't make money. Doesn't sell. All right, guys, we got the 60 second countdown. Y'all ready for this? Thank you for coming. The clockwork orange sounds about right. <laughs> if it turns into Animal Farm, I'm out of here. <laughs> Ship me to Mars. All right, guys. I love this band. I think they're absolutely amazing. To see these guys live, if you ever have that opportunity, do it. Absolutely. Get the best seats you can and just do it. They are so entertaining live. Uh, what I love about Sabaton videos, real quick, they put a lot of effort into them. They tell stories. The Christmas truce, amazing. All right, guys. Let's go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Soldiers of Heaven. I guarantee you this is going to be badass, you guys. They're going to do a phenomenal job. Look at the Christmas truce. Ha! Huh. Amazing. I got I got tissues ready. Now that we all know the backstories, if you need tissues, go get them now. Okay, come on now. I love when that happens. When we put a premiere out and it's supposed to be dropping at 12. It, uh, yeah. Oh, it hasn't even hit 12 yet, so. We're at 11.59. Hello from Sweden. Hello, the kingdom of Sabaton. Sweden. Look at the chat is going bananas right now. Their chat is just lighted up. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> All right, guys. Ooh! Two minutes and counting. Here we go. Is that too loud? God, that's loud. Sabaton and Nightwish together. Look, man, I'll tell you what. Floor's probably like, hell no, Hannes. I'm around you all the time. I don't want to tour with you two, but that would be an epic freaking tour. And Epica. Within Temptation. On it. Let's get them all on there. <laughs> Ooh, one minute! Oh yeah, hit the like button, guys! Forty seconds. Thirty. Yay! It's like New Year's. <laughs> God, that's so loud, though. I'm sorry. Am I blaring? Is that too loud, y'all? Just tell me. What's up, Judah? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy Sabaton New Year. Here we go.
I won't be going anywhere. I will call this post forever. Here on the Alpine slope, where I did my final stand, I shall remain among the ice and snow that binds me to this mountain. Damn. Okay, so right away, the guys are talking about, I'm not coming home. I'm going to be, I'm basically stuck on this ice and in this mountain. That is what we were talking about earlier when we watched the soldiers. Uh, they knew on Christmas, they're not going home. I'll back it up just a little bit because I don't want to miss not one solitary second of this. But I am going to have to pause, you guys. You know why. So I'll just back it up just a tad bit. Where spirits lead the way the wings will never fade. Why Friday, I'll take the stairway to heaven. I'm sky high when I die. I'll be immortal forever. I never, I won't return to Blood Mountain. I am the soldier of heaven. Wow. Love that beat too. Very Depeche mode. I saw the end of war. I watched the soldiers come and go. And I kept my watch forever. So many brave men fell in the battles that were raging down below. I have seen it all, but none will hear my story. All of these years I have been frozen in time. I cried for spring to come. I'll take the stairway to heaven I'm sky high when I die I'll be immortal forever I never, I won't return to Blood Mountain I am the soldier of heaven So good! It's almost like they're giving us Ramstein vibes as well with that beat and that t like the the electronic beats behind their music. What I'm liking is they're showing uh, just the destruction on the mountains, like blowing up, and the soldier that's sitting there cold in the ice, just death, destruction, and that is what war is. I love when Sabaton does these videos because they get so precise to the point, and they're like, "This is what happened." And it's really what happened. It's crazy how amazing they, and all the effort that they put into it. That's why I'll continue to do their reaction videos. It's so damn good what they do. It's amazing. It's a Tommy, get it. Prison Tommy. here with the Christmas truce dedicated to all those unknown heroes who came home I don't know what that says I gotta see it oh goodness gracious yeah it was blocked by by a uh, pair here and this is the genius behind the Christmas truce do you know what that man put in to that video not only did pair uh, do the Christmas truce but all of Sabaton played their parts I mean they were all well, a couple of them were on opposing teams so they were like busted up into teams right like pair and Hannes and Joachim were put they were put on uh, I think they were German 
soldiers, if I'm not mistaken. And then Chris and Tommy were diff on different sides. So it was just an amazing video. And I loved at the end there with all the destruction, the dove. It, oh my God. They never cease to amaze me, Sabaton, you guys. Absolutely. One of my favorite bands. My first ever time hearing Sabaton was actually the homage that they played 40 to 1. It was live at Vakken. And if from there, the energy, I was just like, oh, what is this? No freaking way. I'm like, first of all, dude looks awesome with his mohawk and, you know, the, the camouflage and the vest and stuff. I'm like, I 1000% know that this man is the only man in the world who can pull off a mohawk at that age. Everybody else is just douchebags at that point in time. <laughs> Swear to God. And then to to do the reaction videos like I have, to grow to love that the Night Witches, No Bullets Fly, Bismarck, all of the ones that I've done, it was so cool just to end Christmas truce. Oh, listen, you guys. Since Christmas truce came out, there has not been one day where I haven't played it. It's such a beautiful song. It reminds us of camaraderie and togetherness and brotherhood. You know, it's it was just a beautiful story, beautiful song, beautiful video. And this was absolutely, it's, it was, it's right up there with uh, Sabaton and their standards. I put Sabaton on a, on a massive pedestal because they deserve it. They're absolutely phenomenal people. And like... I don't know about you guys, if you've ever gone to see them live, but I did. And I got to take my oldest son with me. And because of this guy right here, for him to reach out and track me down the way he did, I'll never forget that. I will never forget that for as long as I live. To get to experience Sabaton live with my boy standing there right in front of that stage. The energy, the togetherness, the camaraderie, the brotherhood we all shared at that venue. For that couple hours, we were like COVID who? You Were we all safe? Yeah. I'm vaccinated. My son's vaccinated. Were we all safe? Yeah. We were safe about it. But we had fun again. So there's an honor against people, you know, um, there's an honor with people uh, in the Sabaton community. And I seen that that night. It was such a fun time. So I'm hoping uh, next year I'll get to see them again. I, I absolutely, 100% uh, would, would, yeah, absolutely worth it, you guys. Um all right, so that's uh, that is the Sabaton Soldiers of Heaven video. What did you guys think? I'd like to read some of your comments here. Oh, Kodak six sixty, thank you so much. Thanks. Um, hi, Mike Judas Priest, Paul Evans. Hello. What did you guys think about the video, Soldiers of Heaven? Did Sabaton stay true to themselves and just rock our our socks off with that and telling the story as well? I'm really grateful that I got to put the story before this video. Usually we watch Sabaton history videos. They're so fucking awesome. The Sabaton history channel is great. Vlogging through history with Chris. He's so good too. That guy is a plethora, like an encyclopedia of history. He's so awesome too in person. I got to meet him and his amazing wife at the Sabaton show. So it, it was pretty cool that I think... Uh, and very important that we did the the backstory before the, the we reacted to the video. Oh my goodness, my my stomach is growling. So I gotta eat something. So yeah, absolutely, guys, fun, absolutely fun. They just Sabaton is like no other band, really. Nobody else is like Sabaton especially just the substance behind their music. They don't sing about effing bitches and drugs and all of that that we're used to here in the United States. How many people you could sleep with, how many drugs you could do, how many drugs you could sell. You no. Know, that's why I think I'm geared more. I think I was a European in my past life. Well, my, my family had, did come from Italy, so probably... Probably why I relate better to European. <laughs> Absolutely. It was true, Sabaton, wasn't it? 
Sabaton at its finest. And they're only getting better. It's like some bands, you know, you guys, they go up that roller coaster ride. They go their really, really highs. And then they, you know, sort of like climb down its quality, but not Sabaton. They keep our interest peaked. I think everybody was excited for this one to come out. And how funny for it to come out on a Friday with White Friday being the reason why they wrote uh, Soldiers of Heaven. And White Friday, as we learned, happened on a Wednesday. And I'm thinking to myself, since it was December 13th of, what was it, 1914, if I'm not, 16, I'm sorry. December 13th, 1916 is when White Friday happened. So I'm thinking to myself, oh, Friday the 13th? Is that when it officially, like, they started saying that Friday the 13th was bad luck? Because that was some bad luck there, you guys. Like avalanche after avalanche and just destruction. Ugh. And the only way people were getting off that mountain, going to heaven, dying. You know, because that's what I got from that video as well. Is that when, when in the beginning they're talking about, I'm going to be here. I'm stuck on this mountain in the cold, in the ice, in the snow. And at the end, we've seen the dove. And that was that soldier's way of getting off that mountain. Now that I think about it, it's a very beautiful, very, very beautifully directed. And the just the, the graphics. And I think that they did the message very clear and to the point. I'm absolutely grateful that I get to do this with you guys. This was so much fun, as usual. Um, all right, then. Yeah, Tom McDonald is dropping a new one today, I heard, I think. I don't know. He's hinted around to it. I just dropped a new Up Church video to you guys. Halloween and Violet Orlandi tattoo cover is coming out tomorrow, I believe. I put it for. Not sure. I think it's tomorrow. Uh, all right, guys. Whoo, what a uh, what a great Friday it is because we have uh, did Tom McDonald put a uh, a video out, Krista? Oh, Home Free May Day. You know, Home Free is amazing, absolutely amazing, amazing band. I love Tim. Oh my lord, it's all about their bass. <laughs> oh, we have the same blood type, diabolic laughter. <laughs> I'm a B po B positive. That's my blood type. If, if anybody ever needs a blood transfusion, I got your back. All right, guys. Okay, then, you guys, I have to uh, I have to go take my boys to lunch because I promised them uh, Friday I will take you to lunch because guess what, you guys? My son was supposed to go back to college in five days. He was with me for a month because of winter break, right? And in five days' time, he was supposed to go back. But COVID is a rampant up here right now. So they're doing remote learning. So I get him for another two weeks. <gasps> Yay. All right, guys. See you guys. Have a great day. Remember, uh, to take care of yourselves. Take care of one another. And if we can't have world peace, let's just have peace amongst us. As I guess we can just start there. All right, guys, love you very much. I'm just Jen. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate all of you. Okay, remember to hit the like button before we exit, guys. All right, guys.